Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Bobby Sapphire, talking to you today about the game's hottest deck, Green Sabine. Uh, this deck has a 75% win rate in the TTS League uh, with 21 and 7. Uh, 10 of those wins and one of those losses are me and my team, uh, me along with my brother and Chrono, who's our resident aggro player. And I give him a lot of credit for you know running this deck for a long time. It's a deck he's been running for weeks. He's been running green red aggro uh you know for months essentially but i think he has at least 100 games on green sabine if not more and like if you think about just all the red green games he's had uh he's worked on this a lot i really liked what he was doing decided to jump in um put some steadfast battalions in the main deck and we were off so one of the things i want to talk about is just um i guess the list overall you know, it's a pretty standard red-green list. We have um, a lot of two-drop plays, right? We have 15 two-drops. The Battlefield Marine, the Green Squadron A-Wing, Sabine, the Lion's X-Wing, Rebel Pathfinder. Pathfinder's actually been incredible um, to kill things with shield, especially, um, you know, on the back of Fleet Lieutenant or a pump like Rebel Assault, Wing Leader. Uh, Alliance X-Wing we fought for a long time, but I want to talk a little bit about lane dodging. One of the things that Sabine can do really great, even if she has the initiative turn one, um, is if you keep a hand with like Green Squadron A-Wing and Battlefield Marine, you can use her ability to ping and see where your opponent goes. And if they go to space, you can go to ground and vice versa. Um, there's some matchups where you just kind of want to run space out. You probably don't want to go to ground too often against Boba Fett if you can help it. Um, and control matchups, sometimes you just want to um, lay something down because um, what control decks might do is like just take initiative and play power of the dark side to kill your first turn but if we have initiative we just want to get something down that way if they do want to play something an inferno four or something we can just take initiative and attack one of the things that's like really important is understanding like when to use sabine's ability and when to um, take initiative so you can attack um taking advantage of things like rebel assault fleet lieutenant um energy conversion lab <laughs> to ambush in something um and that's really what broke this open you know a lot of people have been playing yellow sabine for a long time but energy conversion lab you know my pick for best card in the set you know it can't be denied and we started like when i started playing it i just found myself ecling k2 to create to get a kill and create some overwhelm damage and like kind of position it so k2 doesn't die so he actually gets that attack in most people will kill k2 immediately um so he can't attack do four damage and then uh do three damage when he dies so ecl was a good way to like make sure he attacked did some overflow um before he died and then when we started running steadfast battalion in the board we had zeb in the main um you know once i saw like the the post board games where that was good and then thinking about like how steadfast battalion can kill boba fett shout out to astrotech for doing that originally um it can kill krennic and not only that but it just again something with one health it just it does six overflow so that's a ton of damage um so that was a concession to just wanting to aggro as deeply as possible and then so our top end is like three steadfast battalion and it's the only non-hero card in the game so our for a cause i believe in are really strong right now uh and then three gorilla attack pod um having three and three of these can get a little clunky i, I couldn't find the game but i had a recording of me drawing like three gorilla attack pod and two steadfast battalion in the same hand but i just want to tell you some advice but this is the best advice i've ever gotten in card games and shout out to jerry t one of the goat magic players we don't have to mulligan we get to mulligan and like that's a way we can build our deck to like you know take advantage of strong top end things with alongside 15 two drops and like spec four soldier if we're really in a jam and and be happy to mulligan with this deck anytime most likely like look at all these two and three drops like we're gonna find things to play um, and if you don't you know we got unlucky and we move on um, so we talked about lane dodging. I want to talk about reach a little bit. Um, this is, so one way I think about like card gaming in general is like, what am I skewing for in my game one? Uh, right now, aggro is really, really popular. The, like a lot of people play, are playing aggro decks in league. So like my pre-board, that's the PB and the deck title is like skewed for aggro. And like, that's not much because we've done so much testing with this. The, the list is pretty honed. Um, for me, that's like rebel assaults main deck instead of heroic sacrifice main deck. 
in the aggro mirrors you want tempo so things like fleet lieutenant and rebel assault can really um, make us have great action efficiency so we're taking initiative more often than not that makes um our our subsequent fleet lieutenants back it makes our ecl uh sorry makes them better makes ecl better makes k2 makes steadfast battalion great like we want initiative for all these things um we also want to have initiative for like late game when we can for a cause i believe in before they can you know once they've stabilized sometimes we're just burning off the top with for a cause i believe in and um that's our reach in terms of like the tempo um but i want to show you so like against control like if the you know last week everyone was playing Aiden, and so i had the heroic sac sacrifices main deck instead of the rebel assaults because i want to find the four cause i believe in um they're most likely going to kill my guys anyway so if i can do that and get two two extra damage and draw a card go a little bit deeper towards finding my gorilla attack powder for a cause i believe in i really want to do that um in terms of like pre-boarding that's just something i think about in terms like um in in a meta people are going to play things unlimited is slow right now only like 60 people are in the online league logging games you know if we were playing hearthstone or something like there are thousands of games a day and like i remember when i was grinding hearthstone and sometimes my deck would be crushing in the morning and be dead by the afternoon like un like could not win a game because the meta adjusts and that's sort of something you've got to think about every time you go to your game store every time you go to a tournament on the weekend if you're trying to win you've got to sort of adjust your deck accordingly you're not you're anytime you're like this is my 50 i'm playing it always you're probably like missing the point of like having a meta and having a sideboard and stuff so we talked about lane dodging uh for a cause i believe in we talked a little bit about how skewed we are towards hero um, it's really good reach at the end of the game. Like both heroic sacrifice and for cause I believe in help close out versus control. Like there's going to be a point where they kill all our things and are just are just pushing our base and doing damage, and that's when we really want to hit things like for cause I believe in, and ideally, gorilla attack pod. Um, the deck has a little bit of a four drop problem in that it's a really important turn. You know leader deploy turns are like some of the strongest things anyone can do in this game so you know only having f three four drops for sabine's flip turn essentially is kind of rough um i wish that there was a better four drop you know i had tried wampa a little bit and it's not bad with energy conversion lab but it's a little clunky otherwise um i could see if there was something we really didn't like we could fit one in Probably, though, we would just add one to the Heroic Sacrifice and the, or the Rebel Assault count in the main deck. You could even, because then we can play a one drop and a three drop. Um, I often like to do like my Heroic Sacrifice or Rebel Assault play and then follow up with um, a wing leader for Sabine or something, or even just an echo based defender to protect Sabine. The other thing I wanted to mention is just how pushed Metal Ceremony is in this version with Energy Conversion Lab. You know, some people don't like Metal Ceremony, but in, in aggro decks, we want to use every single one of our cards every game because, like, eventually our opponent is going to stabilize, and if we didn't use all our cards, we were inefficient. So having a zero-cost card, which is, like, it's the only one in the game, having a zero-cost card that can push further damage is really, really important. Even if it just gets you one experience token, it's worth, um, especially on someone like Sabine who becomes really hard to kill. But the reason why I consider it pushed in um, the ECL decks is because I'll often, I couldn't find a clip of this, I'm sorry, I know I've done it several times, but um, I'll ECL something like a red three to kill um, an opponent's A-wing. And then I'll attack with my A-wing, and then maybe I'll attack with something on the ground, or I'll deploy Sabine and attack with her. And then that Metal Ceremony, because I ECL'd that turn, is an additional plus one token, and it's just that much more damage. It's that It makes my guys that much um, harder to kill later. So I can understand that people don't love that card. It's a zero cost. It's not overpowered. But using all our cards and using them to do damage is really really important and for that reason i really like it especially combined with the ecl play i mentioned before uh just check my notes guys uh yeah i think honestly i think that's it it's just so the deck is so fast like even there are games where um there was a game i recently won where i um, I played A-Wing, they ECL'd a Star Viper to kill my A-Wing, and I had to ECL Red 3 to kill the Star Viper. And so they're at, like, zero damage, and I have no board, 
And I won that game because of things like K2, um, I don't think Steadfast Battalion that game, but like in a slower game when you can just play Steadfast Battalion, it still becomes a 7-7 overwhelm if they're, you know, if you're at parity and you can have your guy out, uh, you have Sabine out. And then the four cause, I they do a ton of damage. And, um, you know, there's one game where they, my opponent like power the dark sided my A-wing and all I had was Fleet Lieutenant and three for a cause I believe in. And I wasn't going to resource them because they're so important against control. Uh, I just played for a cause I believe in. I binned all the cards I didn't want. I drew K K2 the following turn, flipped my Sabine, and I won that game because it fixed my draws. It did four damage. And um, and I mean, I, I, had the, I don't remember if I played all three, but like when you play three for a cause I believe in, you're generally going to win. So they're just a really good card. Shout out to Garbage Rollers if you didn't check out the article we had um, this week where we drafted uh, our top units space ground event and upgrade uh for cause i believe in was my event pick as like if i could have an event that's what i want so i think it's really really great i think it's carrying this whole archetype um so anyway the oh the last thing i wanted to show you was my sideboard pool i also do this sometimes in the database which is to just like grab every card i might sideboard in this deck um, a lot of these cards I've actually used. You might even see clips in the video of like me using Mercenary Company, like running, running, like playing two straight turns of Mercenary Company to close out a mirror. I like this as potential mirror attack. Um, we were using Zeb, but then we found Steadfast is just so good. We cut the Zebs all together. I've been shitting on Bright Hope, but I lost a game recently where my opponent stuck a Bright Hope when I had three ships and completely stabilized the game that I was like about to win and i lost <laughs> so uh shout out to bright hope truthers um i had three fang I, it's like all of these are one ofs and i put the three here to remind myself like never go below three fang fighters um because of traitorous like if we ever see a deck with traitorous we want to have these um and then some of these are just like other interesting calls mod moth to fill our hand rogue skirmisher to get cards back um but the sideboard i'm settled on right now is like the two pump cards either heroic or rebel assault whichever one to play main other three fang fighters three u-wing reinforcement for control mirrors like after they stabilize the board being able to do things like uh get k2 and a wing leader or something or k2 and an echo base defender or do something crazy like fighters for freedom and sabine and two spec four soldiers or something to ping for four make ourselves like a mini four cause i believe in that repopulates our board and then wolf just for the anti-healing is really good in mid-range it's like okay versus control Iden and krennic but like against a like luke deck that has a bunch of restore um wolf can be really strong so um there's the deck it's been winning a lot and not just for me and my friends but for everybody so um if you have a card that you like in your deck let us know if you think something in here is whack you let me know uh hopefully i've convinced you at least that i have thought and reasoning behind all of these cards um yeah i hope you like the deck and i i hope you've gotten a chance to play it because it is savage ggs